congruence and inequality properties in an isosceles triangle. Theorem 3-4, the isosceles triangle theorem. This states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite these sides are congruent. For corollary 3-4.1, it states that every equilateral triangle is equiangular. While for corollary 3-4.2, it states that each angle of an equilateral triangle has a measure of 60. Now let's move on to theorem 3-5, the converse of isosceles triangle theorem. This states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite these angles are congruent. For corollary 3-5.1, this states that every equiangular triangle is equilateral. Now, for the inequalities in a single triangle. We have theorem 3-6, side angle inequality theorem. This states that if one side of a triangle is longer than the second side, then the measure of the angle opposite the longer side is greater than the measure of the angle opposite the shorter side. Next, we have the theorem 3-7, the angle side inequality theorem. This states that if one angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, then the side opposite the larger angle is longer than the side opposite the smaller angle. Then we have these inequalities in two triangles. We have theorem 3-8, the hinge theorem. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle, then the included angle of the first triangle has a greater measure than the included angle of the second triangle. Then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. For theorem 3-9, the converse of the hinge theorem, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle, and the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle, then the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second triangle. Overlapping triangles. We have here example number one. The given is line AB is congruent to line ED, line AC is congruent to line EF, while line BF is congruent to line DC. Let us refer to the figures shown. Prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF. So we have here the two column proof for the example. We have the given, then BF equals to DC, the definition of congruent segments. FC is equals to FC, the reflexive property of equality. BF plus FC is equals to DC plus FC, the addition property of equality. Then, BF plus FC is equals to BC, DC plus EC equals to DF, the definition of between. BC is equals to DF, the transitive property of equality. BC congruent to DF, the definition of congruent segments. Then, triangle ABC congruent to triangle EDF, the SSS postulate. This is another example. The given, wherein angle ACB is congruent to angle DBC, Line AB is perpendicular to line BC. Line DC is perpendicular to line BC. Let us refer to these figures.
prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. So we have here the two column proof for the example. This is the given. Then we have angle ABC as a right angle and angle DCB as a right angle. This is the definition of perpendicular. Angle ABC congruent to angle DCB, which is the theorem 2-8. Then line segment BC is congruent to line segment BC. That is the reflexive property of congruence. And lastly, we have the triangle ABC congruent to triangle DCB, which is the ASA postulate.